Hello again, astronauts. Here at Bad Astra, we have a running joke that whenever I go into the woods, Eris gets something done. So that's the excuse I need to go hiking. And I have taken a lot of hikes in the name of productivity in the past few years. But what drives us into remote mountains and trails other than our desperate desire to make Eris get work done? Could it be abandoning late stage capitalist hell? Could it be good for us? It turns out nature does a lot of things to your brain besides making you feel just better about the world. So let's talk about what your brain looks like on nature. Welcome to Bad Astra. Scientists and writers have known for a long time that spending time in nature is beneficial. Sunshine gives you vitamin D. The amazing views make you feel a bit better about living on the planet. And it's a great way to get some exercise or just relax. But what is happening in your brain? It turns out that it might not just be a feel good activity. She's so soft. A 2018 meta-analysis of 143 studies looked at the overall health impact of exposure to green space, including both undeveloped land and city parks. They found that increased exposure to green space had a multitude of measurable health benefits, including reduced risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, premature death, preterm birth, stress, and high blood pressure. People also slept more when they had more exposure to green space. Researchers suggested that green space likely provides people more opportunities for physical activity, socializing, exposure to a diverse variety of bacteria, which might benefit the immune system and other health benefits. So South Sister is actually my favorite therapist. She's dead ahead, but uh, she's really hard to get a permit for and it takes forever to get everything scheduled. Does she take Blue Cross Blue Shield? Of course not. Uh, Broken Top, though, much yeah. easier to get a permit from Top Lake. So oh, I, yeah, I see Broken Top a lot. Although, as you can tell, she's had her own issues. Yeah. Um, but that to me makes her more relatable, you know. And then what's that one in the middle again? Uh, that's South Sister. One 2013 study used the 30 by 30 Nature Challenge, which asks Canadian volunteers to spend 30 minutes a day outside nature for. 30 days in the month of May. Of 10,000 self-selected volunteers who agreed to be studied, 2,285 provided usable data. I do not envy social scientists. These usable participants almost doubled their average time in nature and collectively reported better moods, less stress, and that they felt they were more productive at work. Reminder that this is all people who chose to do a spend more time in nature challenge, believing it would be good for them, saying they felt more productive. So there's going to be a bit of bias in there that isn't easy to quantify. In a 2018 study, researchers found that cognitive tasks like memory and cognitive flexibility improved with exposure to nature. Granted, this wasn't reliable when it came to improving impulse control, visual attention, vigilance, and processing speed, at least when compared with urban environments. Doug's short attention span in Up wasn't affected by whether he was in the city or in the countryside. And yes, humans are the dogs in this metaphor. Squirrel! Did you know that the northern flying squirrel is nocturnal and almost exclusively a fungivore? Its association with hypogenous mycorrhizal fungi, nitrogen-fixing bacteria, yeast, and coniferous trees in Oregon show a symbiotic relationship with the coniferous forest in the Pacific Northwest. Look at these cute little squirrels. Eris, 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 that's Cece. Focus. Focus. We're filming a nature script. 
this isn't a squirrel video and that that's Cece. She kind of looks like a squirrel. When it comes to initial theories, stress reduction theory proposed by R.S. Ulrich in 1983 suggests that emotionally, nature makes us feel good, which makes us feel less stressed. This reduction in stress allows for higher levels of sustained attention, which leads to more cognitive benefits. However, a meta-study by McMahon and Estes in 2015 and analysis by Senfords et al. in 2019 showed that mood effects are not correlated to cognitive benefits. It is mid-August! So this theory might not hold water. The feel-good aspect might just be an added perk. Go world fact! In an Illinois study from 1945 that analyzed fox and gray squirrel populations, it found that black prairie areas without a lot of forest cover only had fox squirrel populations, while habitats with wooded areas and ungrazed bottoms could support gray squirrel populations. When it comes to urban settings like Chicago, the researchers found that there were only fox squirrel populations because there wasn't enough trees in the city to support the gray squirrel populations. Either way, researchers said, and I quote, it is probable that no Illinois municipality is without a squirrel population and that 200,000 or more squirrels are resident in municipal areas in the state. I don't know how much of that has changed since the study was published in 1945, but Chicagoans can sleep well knowing there will always be squirrels to see. Okay, back to modern neuroscience. Instead of squirrel studies from the 1940s, attention restoration theory involves the circumstances in which you're exploring nature. So environments that normally provide mental separation, a feeling of space to explore and compatibility with goals, may be experienced differently or have different benefits based on your personal interaction. So feeling like you have that distance from your mundane day-to-day -day activities or work might be the cause of the benefit. For example, when I'm out hiking with my wife and puppy, I get more restorative benefits than when I'm also with my writer friend who won't stop interrupting me with squirrel facts. Jerk. Natural environments also have a visual and audio component that impact your brain. They're composed of more non-straight edges. <laughs> Same. Less color saturation and less variety in hues. Earth tones are such a vibe. When shown images with these characteristics, people thought more about spirituality and what the meaning of life is. Easy, 42, another squirrel fact. Pew, 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 pew. Gray squirrel populations originate from North America and replaced red squirrel populations in much of Britain, Ireland, and Northern Italy. When in mixed populations, the red squirrels had higher glucocortisone concentrations, which is a stress hormone, which explains the reduced body growth and reproductive rate. So, gray squirrels are stressing out the red ones, which is leading to their extinction. And speaking as a highly stressed squirrel myself, I am also small and refuse to reproduce. Eris, Eris, no, stay focused. Now, we're in nature, getting the happy chemicals in our brains and justifying flying you out to Oregon for a hiking trip. Thank you. The coolest part about the impacts of nature on the brain is that they also extend to virtual reality. Exposure to natural environments, even in VR, through images or sounds, improve performance on work, memory, cognitive flexibility, and attention control tasks. In one study, participants were given memory and executive function tests before listening to either one minute of nature soundscapes or one minute of urban soundscapes, uh, balanced for sound volume and all the things. Afterwards, they were given the same tests again. Both groups performed better on the second test because you learn how to take the test, but there was significantly more improvement in the group listening to nature sounds rather than urban sounds. Not only did the subjects rate the natural soundscapes aesthetically higher, but exposure to these sounds improved their cognitive performance over exposure to urban sounds. However, this study doesn't support the stress reduction theory because the preference towards nature sounds had no significant relation 
to the observed cognitive improvement. I should also point out that these studies generally had small sample sizes, mainly of college students. So all of their findings should be taken with a grain of salt and more as initial ideas and reasons to pursue this line of study further. The positive impacts of nature on your brain aren't just limited to full, off-the-grid, designated wilderness areas of nature. Dr. Lisa Nisbet, a psychologist at Trent University, studies human connectedness with nature and its health impact. According to her, there is mounting evidence from dozens and dozens of researchers that nature has benefits for both physical and psychological human well-being. You can boost your mood just by walking in nature, even urban nature. My personal favorite urban nature spot is on the Lakefront Trail in Chicago. And the sense of connection you have with the natural world seems to contribute to happiness, even when you're not physically immersed in nature. Even spending less than a minute looking at a piece of a more natural environment can make a huge difference. Let's examine a 2015 study with 150 college students, stressed out because college is expensive and difficult, probably getting rewarded somehow for their participation, maybe in psych study credits or free pizzas or a one in 20 chance to win an $8 Amazon gift card. This is a tale of two city roofs. One is urban concrete, barren of any nature. The other is a beautiful meadow, green, flowering, an overall better use of city rooftops and completely computer generated and fake. The students participated in a reaction time test and then were given a 40 second micro break looking at a picture of one of the two rooftops. Then they completed the same test again. You won't believe what happened next. Participants who briefly viewed the green roof made significantly lower emission errors and showed a more consistent responding to the task compared to participants who viewed the concrete roof. We argue that this reflects boosts to the subcortical arousal and cortical attention control. Our results extend attention restoration theory by providing direct experimental evidence for the benefits of micro breaks and for city green roofs. Just 40 seconds of looking at a picture of a green roof significantly improved performance consistency and attention span over staring at a concrete one. It's very important to note that these studies often used simulated nature, small sample sizes, and weren't able to draw a clear connection between aesthetic preference, mood, and cognitive perks. So we have some very preliminary evidence that suggests that one, people think nature is pretty. Can't argue with that. Two, people find nature relaxing. Same. And three, looking at or listening to things that your brain perceives as nature, like pictures of green roofs or soundscapes, might temporarily enhance your performance on cognitive tasks. So if you can get out in nature or look at a tree outside your window, it might make you feel better about working from home or in the office for those companies that don't understand the cost effectiveness and accessibility of remote work, or at the very least being flexible. What, no distracting squirrel fact? No, just the ever deepening desire to abandon society and live in the woods to embrace a Henry David Thoreau lifestyle. It's more tempting every day. <laughs> so maybe give us another fun squirrel fact to interrupt this doom spiral? Pew, 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 squirrel fact! Quick fire round! We've got four native species and two invasive ones that have bushy tails for balance and that are active all year round. Western gray squirrel, or Squirius gracius, is a Big and at a whopping 19 to 24 inches with a white belly and silvery fur with some black in the tail. It is a threatened species as of 1993, 10 on 10, squirrel that must be protected at all costs, except in Europe. Uh, Douglas squirrels, or Tamascarius douglasi, or a chickadee or pine squirrel, it's losing its mixed conifer forest habitat and is a bad neighbor because it's loud first thing in the morning in winter. 7 out of 10 squirrel, let me sleep when my seasonal depression is at its worst, thanks.
American Red Squirrel, or Tamascurius Hudsonius, or another chickadee slash pine nickname. There are also bad neighbors because they're loud and raucous. They're the frat guys of the squirrels, mostly in higher elevated coniferous and semi-open forests. 8 out of 10, at least they're not loud first thing in the morning. Northern Flying Squirrel, Glamocius Siberius, is nocturnal, seldom seen, and eating a lot of fungi and lichen. 9 out of 10 squirrel because the gliding thing is adorable, but not the platonic ideal of a squirrel. Then there are in the invasive jerk faces, the eastern gray and eastern fox squirrels. They're an aggressive threat with no fear of humans, and a habit for stealing resources, carrying disease, and outbreeding all the other squirrels. The New Yorkers of squirrels. Go back to the Big Apple, 6 out of 10 squirrels. We mock off points for being an invasive species and being from the East Coast. So, a big thing to keep in mind, given how preliminary all of this data is, is that further study is needed. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Aster out. Do you think there are more squirrels in the lake? Yep. I'm gonna go yep. check. I'm yep. gonna go check! Astra, Astra, to the stars, to the stars.